Hello and welcome to this special show. All the political action from New Delhi as Prime Minister Modi is all set to be sworn in for a third term. We'll focus on the coalition dynamics on the cabinet and the regions of influence. But first, the headlines we're tracking this up. The Prime Minister Modi meets President Murmu, who invites him to form the government. He says he will present a list of ministers for the new cabinet to Rashtrapati Bhavan soon. He also meets BJP veterans LK Advani and Murli Manohar Joshi. The Prime Minister is elected leader of the NDA. He says a majority is required to run the government, while a consensus is needed to run the nation. लेकिन देश चलाने के लिए सर्वमत बहुत जरूरी होता है key allies chandrababu naidu and nitish kumar categorically declare their unconditional support for narendra modi nitish says he will always support modi and naidu credits modi for the nda victory in Karnataka, the special investigating team questions arrested JDS leader Rajwal Revanna's mother, Bhavani Revanna, in the case. She gets conditional bail and has been instructed to stay in Bengaluru. But the big story today was the massive conglomeration of the NDA MPs and all leaders, the victorious and the defeated, along with BJP state presidents, in New Delhi. The declaration unanimous from the BJP Stop Brass and its allies that it is categorically Narendra Modi in charge. While the cabinet formation and negotiations over births is on with allies, Prime Minister Modi was invited by President Murmu to form a government. The swearing in all set for this Sunday and the key allies, TDP's Chandra Babu Naidu and Nitish Kumar, categorically declared their unconditional support for the Prime Minister. Let's just listen in to some of the reactions from the day before we head further on the show. Sathwe NDA Sarkar ko tisri baar desh ki seva karne ka desh vaanshyo ne adesh diya hai avsar diya hai मैं देशवासियों का फिर से एक बार ये अवसर देने के लिए हृदय से आभार व्यक्त करता हूं आज सुबह एनडीए की मीटिंग हुई थी एनडीए के सभी साथियों ने मुझे फिर से एक बार इस दायित्व के लिए पसंद किया है और सभी एनडीए के साथियों ने राष्ट्रपति जी को इसकी जानकारी दी और राष्ट्रपति जी ने मुझे अभी बुलाया था और मुझे प्रधानमंत्री डेजिनेटेड के रूप में काम कर रहे एक निबंध नियुक्ति दी है अब बिहार और देश बहुत आगे बढ़ेगा अब बिहार बिहार का भी तो सब काम हो ही जाएगा जो कुछ भी बचा हुआ है उसको ही कर देंगे सबसे पुराना इलाका है तो इसीलिए हम लोग तो पूरे तौर पर हर तरह से जो आप चाहिएगा उस काम के लिए हम लोग लगे रहेंगे और बहुत अच्छा होगा अब जितने लोग साथ हुए हैं अब बहुत अच्छा है और सब लोग बहुत अच्छे ढंग से अपनी बात कर रहे हैं तो सब लोग ठीक हैं हम मिल करके सब लोग चलेंगे और हम लोग पूरा आपके साथ रहेंगे और आप पूरे देश को कितना आगे बढ़ाएंगे ये बहुत खुशी की बात होगी यही हम लोगों को कहना है और मेरा आग्रह यही है कि जल्दी से जल्दी आपका काम शुरू हो जाए शपथ ग्रहण हो जाए अब आप एतवार को करने वाले हैं तो हम तो चाहते थे कि आजो हो जाता तो अच्छा था लेकिन, लेकिन आपकी जब इच्छा है तो जब भी हो जितना तेजी से काम हो जाए तो बहुत अच्छा है आई एम इन द पॉलिटिक्स फॉर द लास्ट फोर डिकेट्स आई हैव सीन सो मेनी लीडर्स आई कैन गिव एंटायर क्रेडिट फॉर नरेंद्र मोदी जी फॉर मेक इन इंडिया प्राउड ग्लोबली दैट इज हिज बिगेस्ट अचीवमेंट फॉर द कंट्री नाउ अंडर हिज लीडरशिप वी हैव रीच 
fifth largest economy in the world. Now, we are confident during this tenure, he is going to make India third largest economy in the world. हम सब लोग आदरणीय प्रधानमंत्री जी को अपने दिल की गहराइयों से हार्दिक बधाई देते हैं जिनके अथक प्रयास अथक मेहनत हर पल हर घड़ी हर दिन हर वर्ष हर पल पल देश की सेवा के लिए उन्होंने समर्पित किया और यही कारण है कि आज भारत पुनः इतिहास रच रहा है कि तीसरी बार लगातार बहुमत के साथ एनडीए की सरकार आ रही है दोस्त कैटेगोरिकल डेक्लोरेशन देर द फोकस नाउ इज ऑन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द कैबिनेट एंड हु द बिग फेसेस फ्रॉम द एलाइज एंड द बीजेपी विल बी इट विल ऑल्सो बी इंटरेस्टिंग टू सी हाउ the regional power equations shift in a national coalition cabinet a special panel up ahead to discuss that but first one of the potential cabinet ministers is jds chief and former karnataka chief minister hd kumaraswamy who's been elected from the mandya lok sabha constituency the jds won two of the three seats it contested and the buzz is that he may be aspiring for the agriculture portfolio given his party's image as one of the farmers and my colleague vasudha venu gopal spoke exclusively to kumara swami on the day of uh, this very special nda meet uh, with me is hd kumara swami former chief minister of karnataka and also the mp elect of mandya who has won with a huge margin and this is a party that's also going to play a very pivotal role in the working of the nd alliance thank you mr kumar sami for speaking to nd tv you are one of you are the first person who was called to speak today on the nd alliance how do you see the stability of this alliance what do you think would be the road map this uh, present uh, nd alliance now that telugu desham and jdu they are also openly committed to the honorable prime minister solidly this government will going to be stand future days also for the country what the people required the stability and to sustain the economic issues for the actually everybody will going to with mutual understanding confidence they will work out Right. Mr. Kumar Sami, your party is known to be the party of farmers and we have known your experience in that. Is there any special insistence on getting some ministries like agriculture because you have experience in that area? Up till now, we have not discussed anything. Everybody's concentration was about the development uh, from last uh, three, four days after the uh, election results. I think from today onwards, regarding the expansion of the uh cabinet and uh, the portfolio issue it will come to discussion then only we can actually discuss about all those things right mr kumar sami now that you are part of uh, the ruling government would would the alliances with the political al alignment in the state change because uh, will the alliance continue this alliance will continue for a long time because last year when uh, honorable home minister invited me to discuss on that day itself we have decided to continue our relationship for a long term i think there is no problem with both the parties we have working from last one ma one year with mutual understanding there is no hurdles about the both the parties uh, together working there is no issue at all right Uh, so there was also congress was speculating that the congress guarantees will play an important role and they may they may get actually more number of seats how do you see how do you assess the results in karnataka in this election there is no influence of this uh, five guarantees now already congress circle their mls they are criticizing about this uh, five guarantees they are demanding to remove those guarantees to drop that five guarantee scheme 
it is already going on right and sir how did you think of the prime minister's speech today you know in some ways he presented a, he gave a glimpse of what the coalition would look like the prime minister's presentation today not for not only today from previous 10 years whatever he announces several issues whatever is the vision of his uh, in his mind i think his mind is working every time every minute about the development of this country right the problem to say solve those problems that is the mind he always working out right my last question to you sir how do you also see the uh, growth and expansion of your own party the future of uh, prospects of jds considering that the party has gone through some challenging karnataka, times karnataka in future days there is a prospectus for the jds uh, party with the alliance with bjp also individually also in this election our party workers they have already impressed about their working uh, pattern with the combination of BJ, jd bjp bjp friends they are happy the way in which our party workers uh, they have worked in this election to win the uh bjp candidates right sir and a giant killer in the form of uh, mr C, dr c n manjunath has uh, emerged and it was very surprising because he defeated dk suresh would you be talking about health ministry for him sir for us the that uh, uh, incident that uh, dr manjunath who contested from bangalore rural constituency yes that is right everybody feels that he is a giant killer but regarding his uh, portfolio or uh, becoming health minister that is left to bjp i command they have to decide right well extremely interesting one of the big winners remember of these elections is hd kumar swami who was routed in the assembly election by the congress the dk shiv kumar sidaramaiah combination routing the jds in its belt of influence in old mysore region but this time he is reiterated his presence there and this is a new lease of life for the jds it will be interesting to see how they all work as far as a common minimum program is concerned and ideological issues as well as other regional issues are concerned but uh, for the moment the focus on how the dynamics of coalition politics will reflect on the cabinet and also how regional inter regional power equations could potentially shift joining us this evening amitabh tiwari political strategist aditi fadnes political editor of business standard uma sudhir who tracks who has tracked chandra babu naidu for many many decades closely and other politicians as well she joins us from hyderabad prabhakar kumar who tracked nitish kumar for many decades joins us uh, from patna my first question to you prabhakar kumar let's look at the probables as far as the jds is concerned and also if there are any specific issues while they have all declared unconditional support to prime minister modi are there any specific issues for a cmp that they may be push, pushing for so they have already raised one if you uh, not to forget the yesterday statement of agnivir that was raised by jdu that was raised by kc tyagi who happens to be a very senior jdu leader so there are many other in pipeline they'll also be talking about the farmers issues they'll be also be talking about the the ucc and nrc so these are the issues with jds jdu has in the list but they have so far raised one issue that is uh, that is the agnivir issue and jdu has a reservation on this they want that that this particular scheme to be revisited and they have put forth their uh, point to the bjp leaders they have also put it in the public domain see as far as the probables in the cabinet is concerned what we are learning is that jdu would get three seats in the cabinet as per uh, the 12 number which they have and it would be two cabinet berth and one mos one minister of state berth the probable names floating as per the sources in the party is lalan singh who happens to be a former national president of jdu a very senior leader and a lok sabha mp from munger he's a he's a third time mp uh, from munger and then you have ramnath thakur who happens to be son of karpuri thakur the former bihar chief minister who was just uh, given just uh, that uh, bharat ratna uh, few few months back last month rather and and then you would have one uh, from uh, bagha constituency or balmiki nagar constituency sunil kumar so basically going by how nitish kumar operates he would see the caste equations first he would choose the candidate 
trying to give representation to all caste who actually he thinks should be represented from Bihar and he would have a word with the BJP as well and remember it would be kind of a, a, a joint nomination from uh, JDU and BJP from Bihar and they would both of both the parties would try that that representation of all the parties are actually all the cast are actually there there as far as the Bihar is concerned right interesting that you say that you're saying the caste aspirations and the caste equations will be kept in mind as Nitish Kumar works towards that. Uma Sudhir, from the TDP's point of view, any categorical probables that you can pick? Vira, uh, yes, you must should have, uh, I guess, uh, Ramon Naidu, uh, one of the youngest, but already three-time MP, and his father has been union minister. Yeram Naidu was rural minister in the United uh, Front government, 1996-98. Of course, at that time, uh, Ramon Naidu would have hardly been about 10 years old, I guess. But now mm -hmm. is uh, Ram Mohan Naidu's turn, and uh, he has been uh, leader of the legislature party for the uh, TDP as well. And therefore, uh, he is certainly a probable. Another one name I can think of is Lavu Krishnadev Railu, uh, who actually came from the YSRCP. He won the 2019 election as a YSRCP candidate, and now uh, in the TDP, and won uh, Narsra Peta as well. And uh, two other senior people, actually, BK uh, Partha. Sarthi is somebody who has been MP in the past, uh, has been a Penugunda MLA as well and uh, he could be also one of those probables and another name is uh, someone who has been a Rajya Sabha MP, Vemi Reddy, Prabhakar Reddy who defeated Vijay Sai Reddy, he is actually a uh, he is into mining infra and uh, he is uh, represented the Nellur constituency and has uh, been in that sense uh, quite a prominent leader in that area as well. But remember, uh, Veera, from Andhra Pradesh, you have to also count in the Janasena in a sense. It could be a Balashori from Machli Patnam who did again jump from the YSRCP uh, to the TDP. But he is a probable, uh, the Prime Minister uh, referring to Pawan and saying that he is not a Pawan but an Andhi. So, <laughs> there is a, even if Pawan is not making those demands, there could be that equation of uh, accommodation and yes, of course, there are three BJP MPs there, quite prominent ones. Someone who has been a union minister as well, uh, Purandeshwari has been a union minister as well and of course, CM Ramesh is again uh, one from uh, uh, Anakapali. So, they are also prominent names but accommodation perhaps uh, for the uh, uh, for the Telugu Desam would be the most important on uh, right. uh, the mind of Chandra Babu Naidu and accommodation from the BJP side for them. Right. Uh, Andhra Pradesh perhaps arguably was the biggest winner as far as these elections are concerned, the way the numbers have panned out. I want to also pose the question of how this can potentially rejig or alter the inter-regional power equations. While the BJP had faces from the south, including the finance minister in the cabinet, in terms of grassroots political leaders having influence over the cabinet, somebody like a Chandra Babu Naidu, potentially a H.D. Kumaraswamy being in the cabinet itself, could be very interesting to see how the southern influence also potentially increases. Before I come to Uma on that, Aditi Fadness, do you see a shift in terms of regional, inter-regional balance as far power balance in this cabinet compared to what's the outgoing one? Well, I think so because uh, the BJP has to accommodate, has to accommodate uh, the, the, the new, the only MP they have from Kerala, uh, you know, from Trisur. And Sudesh they Gopi. also have to, exactly. And they also have to accommodate uh, some winners from Karnatak because Karnatak, uh, uh, I mean, it's not you a get two former victory. chief ministers from Karnataka, Basavaraj Bombay and uh, H.D. Kumaraswamy. Exactly. Well, that's the problem. So, uh, I mean, now it's a problem of plenty. How do, how do you accommodate alliance partners as well as accommodate your own people who have unarguably, uh, you know, are giant killers? Hmm. Uh, three MPs from, uh, from <coughs> Andhra Pradesh uh, is not a small thing and they have to accommodate somebody. Uh, in order to uh, uh, basically assuage feelings and you can't, I mean, the, it's always a, a tussle. How do you allow your own party to grow uh, while you are in a coalition? This is a perpetual problem that the BJP has had and uh, it has had this problem in Odisha, it has had this problem in Punjab, uh, now it doesn't have allies there, but it has allies elsewhere. 
so uh, it's always a uh, you know a, a kind of a tricky uh, sort of uh, uh, path to uh, traverse right it will be very interesting amitabh tiwari uh, in terms of the power balance uh, there was a sense from uh, some of the south indian at least opposition leaders that you didn't have strong political faces from the south uh, in a, in a in the last uh, uh, government uh would you believe that the presence of a naidu uh, presence of an hd kumaraswamy could bring a larger power balance in favor of the south uh i would not say in favor of the south but yeah i mean if you uh, speak from a perspective of the regional imbalances which were there see largely how's are uh, how is a ministry created so in 2019 only 8 and a half 9% of nda mps were from the southern region this time because of the inclusion of tdp and because of the decline in the number of seats at the nda this number has doubled to 16% so automatically even if you go by a proportional representation the number of ministerial berths which is likely to accrue to not only members from the bjp from the uh, uh, southern states who have won but also to tdp so this will sort of uh, uh, reduce the imbalances which were earlier but which is also expected to be on the levels which reflect the proportion of the south uh, uh, indian mps in the overall pie so if now, now like odisha so odisha has now 20 mps correct so 20 mps out of uh, 240 so it's a significant number so we uh, might see uh, an increased representation from odisha that's how ministries are created and that's how the 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 power is shared and uh, balance is 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 restored that's right that's interesting that you say that yes there will have to be a representation in terms of uh, where the mps are coming from in the government and that will have a say i'm talking specifically amitabh and i want to go to uma on this specifically in terms of the kind of leaders who are there uh, in this coalition uma whether it's a chandra babu naidu or whether it's an hd kumar swami these are aggressive assertive uh leaders uh do you believe that that could have an impact in terms of a pan india influence in terms of regional balance certainly so uh, veera because uh, you know even if you just take the issue of the minorities and the muslim community and uh, very clearly chandrababu naidu took a stand uh, quite different from the nda and he made it very clear in his meetings as well that that is what his stand is going to be on reservation and the policies towards the muslims and therefore when he is part of the nda obviously something like that will have to be tempered down by the bjp it can't speak in the same kind of a language that it did in the run up to the 2024 elections that is one example but when you are talking about regional balance you will not be able to forget telangana either you hear you hear the numbers have doubled from a 4 to a 8 and you have someone like a dk aruna a woman mehboob nagar and she has won this election then an etela rajender again a caste equation that will be very important to accommodate and he is someone who's won from uh, the biggest constituency we say in the country uh, uh, you know uh, that's uh, that's something that will have to be again uh, thought about and then you have somebody like konda vishweshwar also uh, you know in the race certainly to be a union minister but perhaps the uh, you know nda allies will be given priority in this sense because like aditi was mentioning there is too much of a competition and therefore the accommodation may become a little bit more difficult but yes you are right uh, you know if the perception earlier was that it was uh, delhi that was dictating you did have a kishan reddy uh, you know as a minister here the two terms but uh, but this time round with somebody like chandra babu naidu very much in the picture he will have his ministers there but he is the tall leader whose uh, uh, whose uh, uh, whose view will have to be taken into account when uh, when you are talking about uh, making any statements at all and therefore i do believe uh, you know on an issue like delimitation as well there will be a voice that is going to uh, voice the view of the south right uh, i think that's an important point that you make there but you made a more important point earlier about the minorities etc Uh, Aditi Fadnes, so far the indication is Chandra Babu Naidu says Andhra Pradesh is my priority. Do you see the ideological sticking points coming up in the CMP, or do you believe that that's uh, you know the indication so far is that's that's an irrelevant issue at the moment? They're all looking at forming a strong government, 
and benefiting their particular states of influence? Well, I, I don't think, uh, I mean, I don't know what the CMP is going to be, if there is going to be one. Uh, the issue, I think, is mainly uh, a question of money uh, and a question of uh, uh, building the infrastructure in Andhra Pradesh uh, for Chandra Babu Naidu. I think it's very, very clear. I mean, Andhra Pradesh is pretty much a mess. Uh, there is no capital or if there is a capital, we don't know about it. Uh, you have all these offshore uh, oil uh, pockets uh, and uh, you have to develop infrastructure to get to them right uh, you also have so many put so much potential uh, like in sri city for instance uh, and you want to get capital into your state so uh, there is no doubt at all that uh, this is going to keep him really busy right. but one more aspect of the south that we need to address is tamil nadu what are you going to do with Tamil Nadu? That's right. I mean, meditation is all very well, but uh, Tamil Nadu doesn't have Amitabh Tiwari, a BJP MP. Amitabh Tiwari, your final comments. What would you believe be the defining features or defining message from the cabinet? I think the defining message from the cabinet is that this government represents all sections of the society and all regions of India. And that's, how the, that's what the mandate is also. The mandate is that the regional parties also will have a say in the government formation and that in a way also is representative of federalism which is one of the basic tenets of our constitution so we will have regional parties also uh, playing a bigger role in this government formation now you were showing that uh, naidu is uh, or naidu could aim for the convener post now there could be competition between naidu and nitish kumar for the convener post Tamil Nadu, uh, there have been no MPs from Lok Sabha, so we'll have to see how they they, they accommodate or give. Uh, Question will also be whether there is a minority representation in a cabinet, which is an extremely important aspect. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Uh, but thank you all for joining us. Uh, fascinating conversation. We'll keep close track of the formation of that cabinet and the swearing-in ceremony. But that's all we have time for now. Up next, Gargi Rawat with. A special focus on the NEAT controversy.